Since the inception of rotary drilling, it has always been necessary to stop the pumps and interrupt circulation while making connections with jointed drill pipe. This has caused downhole problems which can now be mitigated with National Oil Well Varco's Continuous Circulation System CCS. Interrupting circulation causes problems in challenging drilling environments. These include the unplanned influx of hydrocarbons and lost circulation, formation breakdown or stuck pipe. These problems can result in significant lost time during connections cause potential well control incidents or prevent achieving the planned total depth. By using the continuous circulation system these problems can be overcome and difficult wells successfully drilled. The NOV continuous circulation system is innovative yet it uses conventional technology. The CCS rig floor package has a footprint of 5 feet by 6 feet and is 8 feet high with an extended height of 12 feet. Hydraulically powered, it combines three 9-inch BOP bodies with upper pipe rams, middle blind rams and lower pipe rams, an iron roughneck snubbing device on top and retractable drill pipe slips attached to the bottom. The integrated unit is contained within a protective steel cage with four hydraulic cylinders to extend it an additional four feet above the rig floor. The system also includes a mud flow diverting manifold, which is tied into the high pressure mud delivery line between the mud pumps and the standpipe manifold. A top drive connection tool and dual sided elevators which allows access to the drill pipe from opposite sides at the drill floor and the fingerboard. Together they allow the top drive saver sub to be made up to a drill pipe stand in the derrick. A hydraulic power unit and driller's console complete the package. How does the CCS work? After installing the CCS over the drill pipe in the rotary table, the first step in making a connection is to pick up the drill string to position the tool joint at approximately the correct height above the rotary table. The next step is to raise the unit on its jacks and close the upper pipe rams above the tool joint. The unit is then lowered so that the closed pipe rams tag the upset of the tool joint. The lower pipe rams are then closed and the unit is raised again until the rams tag the bottom of the tool joint. This indexes the tool joint for the built-in computer. The drill pipe slips are then moved hydraulically into their setting position and the drill string and unit lowered together, setting the slips in the rotary table. At this point the grips in the snubber are engaged on the saver sub above the tool joint. The pressure chamber created between the upper and lower pipe rams is opened to the diverter manifold and filled with drilling fluid at circulating pressure. The connection is broken and spun out by the hydraulic motors in the snubber which simultaneously restrains and controls the upward movement of the disconnected tool joint against the force exerted by the circulating pressure inside the pressure chamber. With the connection separated, there are two flow paths for the circulating drilling fluid into the open tool joint box. One via the standpipe and top drive the other through the side from the diverter manifold. The flow from the top drive is shut off and the blind rams closed, isolating the lower half of the pressure chamber. Pressurized fluid from the upper chamber is bled off into the mud pits. The snubber is disengaged and the upper pipe rams opened before the top drive connection tool is raised by the top drive to pick up the next stand of drill pipe. The next stand is picked up, centered by the pipe guide over the CCS and slowly lowered to gently tag the closed blind rams. The snubber head engages and lifts the new stand a few inches. 
The upper pipe rounds are closed and the upper chamber filled with fluid, equalizing the pressure between the upper and lower chambers. The blind rams are opened, re-establishing simultaneous mud flow through the standpipe and top drive, as well as through the side connection and down through the open drill pipe box. The snubber head pulls down the new stand and spins up the connection to a torque of around 10,000 foot-pounds. Full make-up torque is then applied by the torque cylinders. Pressure in the chamber is released and the fluid drained back into the mud pits. The upper and lower pipe rams are opened. The snubber head disengaged from the new stand and the unit raised from the rig floor to unset the slips, which fold away horizontally. The unit is then lowered back to its resting position and drilling resumes. Using the CCS brings many benefits and advantages. One of them is to drill formations that have a narrow pore pressure frac pressure window. On this graph of depth versus pressure in the well bore, the red line represents the formation pore pressure, the blue line the fracture pressure. The green line is the equivalent circulating density, or ECD, of the circulating drilling fluid and shows the steady state conditions when drilling ahead. The ECD or bottom hole circulating pressure is the sum of the hydraulic or static head of the drilling fluid plus the friction pressure created by the circulating drilling fluid in the annulus and any surface choke back pressure. Conventionally, when the pumps are stopped to make a connection, the dynamic friction component is removed and the bottom hole pressure reverts to the hydraulic head of the static drilling fluid column. Similarly, when the pumps are restarted, the circulating friction component re-establishes the ECD. In many drilling environments, there's sufficient difference between the pore pressure and the fracture pressure to permit drilling without significant problems. However, when the pore pressure is higher than normal and the pumps are stopped, the lower bottom hole pressure may allow hydrocarbons to flow into the well bore, thus creating the conditions for a kick and a potential blowout. This situation can be avoided by increasing the mud weight sufficiently to make sure that the hydraulic head of the static mud column is high enough to control the pore pressure when circulation is stopped. When the formation fracture pressure is lower than normal, a fracture may be induced when the pumps are on creating partial or even total fluid losses. Lost circulation can result in stuck drill pipe, the flow of fluid into the formation pushing the drill pipe into the side of the well bore or from the build-up of uncirculated well bore solids. If a fracture is induced and the losses are high enough, the circulating pressure in the well bore and hence the ECD can be reduced significantly. This can create the wellbore conditions for a kick or blowout, even in normally pressurized reservoirs. The worst of all scenarios is where the pore pressure and fracture pressure gradients are very close or have a very narrow window between them. In this case, when drilling conventionally, it's possible that taking an influx of fluid or inducing a fracture can't be avoided. To try to overcome the problem, Techniques such as pumping lost circulation material or cement to seal the induced fracture may allow drilling to proceed. However, after drilling ahead, the problem may recur lower in the formation and require placement of multiple cement plugs. Maintaining uninterrupted circulation and steady state ECD conditions can provide a solution to drilling in these difficult formations. Drilling with the continuous circulation system may be the only way to achieve the planned target depth of the well. With the CCS, walking the line can be more tightly controlled than with traditional stop-start drilling technology.
The first field application of the system took place on a rig in southern Italy. It was deployed by the Italian oil company ENISPA. ENI will use the CCS in oil fields that it is developing in the Caspian, North Africa, and have already completed one project in the Mediterranean, where serious drilling problems have prevented them reaching the target reservoir formation. Most of these locations are logistically remote, with high operating costs. Therefore, the company decided to test and prove the system in an accessible and benign application, the Val d'Agri field in southern Italy. The village of Val d'Agri is in the Basilicata region of southern Italy, about two hours' drive southeast of Naples. This picturesque rural area depends on a mixture of agriculture, tourism and oil and gas production to sustain the local economy. The area has many historical and archaeological sites, including the Roman ruins at Grumentum, which are maintained with financial assistance to which ENI is a contributor. The area is also a center for ENI drilling and production operations. The Mont Enoch No. 10 well, located about 10 kilometers east of the village of Val d'Agri, was chosen by ENI for the first commercial application of NOV's continuous circulation system. Mont Enoch 10 is one of several wells drilled to develop the reservoir beneath the Lucano Apennine Mountains. The drilling plan for the well included using the CCS when drilling out the 13 and 3 8 casing shoe building angle and drilling the tangent section. A total of 900 meters of 12 and a quarter inch hole. The CCS was installed just before drilling out the casing shoe. Over 800 meters of 12 and a quarter inch hole were drilled with the CCS. Building angle from vertical to an inclination of 35 degrees and continuing in the tangent section. Some 82 connections were made with the CCS while drilling or tripping, without interrupting circulation. Having seen the principles behind the CCS and the advantages it brings, let's look at the system in action at Montenoc. To begin the operation, the CCS is positioned over the well center on the rig floor. The pipe rams are closed, the tool joint indexed and the slip set. The pressure chamber is created by the pipe rams being closed around the drill pipe above and below the tool joint. With pressure now equalized inside and outside the drill string by opening the sideline to the diverter manifold, the connection is broken and the blind rams closed to split the chamber into upper and lower sections. Pressure is released and fluid drained from the upper chamber allowing the saver sub to be removed to pick up and insert a new stand. While the connection is broken, there is uninterrupted drilling fluid flow from the rig pumps through the diverter manifold into the lower chamber and down through the open box end of the tool joint. To complete the operation, the new stand is lowered to gently tag the closed blind rams. The upper pipe rams are closed and the snubber grips re-engaged. After filling the upper chamber with fluid and opening flow from the top drive to equalize the pressure in the upper and lower chambers, the blind rams are opened and flow re-established through the stand pipe and drill pipe. The new stand is then lowered and the drill pipe pin and box spun together and made up to the correct torque by the snubber. Pressure in the chamber is released and fluid drained into the mud pits before both upper and lower pipe rams are opened and the snubber disengaged. The CCS is raised, unseating the slips, allowing normal drilling operation.